Hello there, my name is Ian Miskimmon and I manage the Crossrail Bentley Information Academy. In the next 15 minutes I'm going to take you through what an academy means. Firstly, before we look into the main academy, what I wanted to do is to bring up some stats about Crossrail. It's a £15 billion project with well over 1 million CAD files and model files, uh, almost a million documents, 650,000 assets that need to be tagged, um, eight and a quarter thousand individual document users, almost a thousand now individual CAD users. These uh, stats are a little out of date. 86 different contracts, uh, quite a few uh, central interchanges, infrastructure maintainers, um, and some rather pleasing um, stats at the bottom as well. But all this would be a hell of a lot harder without BIM. So what are the ingredients for BIM. Well, there are three key ingredients. The first one, in no particular order, is process. Now, we have the government BIM strategy, um, as well as BS and PAS 1192. We have Uniclass uh, and also the Crossrail BIM uh, principles and strategy documents. And these go together to help us form the processes uh, required for the project. We also have some pretty good technologies with ProjectWise, Enterprise Bridge, the VHI set of design software that cover our CAD modeling, GIS um, and 3D, 4D um, requirements. But the one ingredient that is not mentioned very often is people. So those three key ingredients people, process and technology. And the most important of those is people. Most often forgotten though. However, to try and change that, back last August in 2012, um, two people got together to think about how to resolve it. Firstly, we have Andrew Wollstoneholm, who is the CEO of Crossrail, and he was looking at the Academy to help support the government construction strategy and increase the use of BIM from start to finish within the supply chain of Crossrail and also to deliver a lasting legacy of best practice in innovation. Greg Bentley, uh, the Bentley Chief Executive Officer, was looking very much about making us work smarter together. Um, most people use only about 20% of the capabilities, of the technology they deploy for a project. And if we can work smarter with that from the beginning to the end of that supply chain, we can really start to make the technology work for us rather than work against us. Now, the supply chain in our instance is very much from the manufacturers, fabricators, logistics, tier two, three and one uh, contractors, Crossrail themselves, and also further into the Rail for London, Transport for London and Network Rail. So we're looking at the whole supply chain from start to finish. So what is the Academy? Well, it's there to enhance the supply chain knowledge and try and drive the construction industry's innovation within BIM. It offers a curriculum particular to Crossrail, looking at the processes, the people and the technology needed to deliver that industry best practice. And it also looks towards having the knowledge that the people going through the academy that's been gained to be transferred onto other infrastructure projects. So what does the academy deliver? Well, it looks at awareness briefings, which come in many flavors, whether they're a high level audience with, the standard awareness briefings or the much more technical uh, focus sessions. It delivers coaching facilities. It looks at um, technology integration laboratories, education and engagement opportunities, and something we know as the big BIM world. But why do we do these awareness briefings? Now, Crossrail benchmark the contract uh, contractor's performance. Uh, and this is a report published out in January uh, 2013. Simple RAG report, 
But on the left hand side, we see a list of contractors, contracts and areas. I can't give you the exact names now uh, to protect the innocent, but um, they are there when Andrew delivers his presentation to all the CEOs of those contractors. Now, obviously, this generates two reactions, one of anger at first. Why, why are you uh, benchmarking and, um, and comparing me to my other contractors? And two, which is much more um, constructive, how can I improve what I'm doing here? How can I turn my reds and ambers into greens? Now, through the, uh, the academy, um, you, we can see a change in the performance of those contractors. This is April 2013. So in a very short period of time, we brought those specific contracts within the academy. And you can see the results changing from the reds and the ambers very much into the greens. We've still got a, a long way to go from April, but the results currently at the moment um, in the tail end of 2013 are looking pretty impressive. So why is it necessary? Well, I think this is one of the most important diagrams you'll see within this. Within this cross section of the station, we have 18 different contracts, 12 different uh, contractors and, and joint ventures, um, all working not exactly at the same time, but all within the same space and um, complex times of each other. So we need to ensure that people share information in the same processes, the same formats, um, the same areas, and uh, really understand each other's interfaces and coordinations. If we take this down to the fact, let's say that the station designer was uh, some temporary works and had hoarding and scaffolding that went across the track in the red area on the left, um, but didn't model that and didn't share that. Um, and the guy putting down the tracks uh, wasn't able to bring his machinery through the tunnel at the time that he wanted to, um, who's responsibility of that whose compensation event would that be well it certainly wouldn't be the guy laying the tracks um, but probably the station designer because they didn't share that information uh, on time so some of the stats within the academy we've had uh, many tier one tier two contractors through 500 over 500 individuals across 34 different organizations um, other attendees through 210 across 33 organizations and this includes Crossrail as well because education must begin at home if your own people don't understand your vision how can you expect other people to do also um, other owner operators throughout the world uh, from um, australia china um, russia uh, germany italy south africa uh, all over the place have come in to see how Crossrail are delivering their level two bim uh, projects. Um, the supply chain further on down and also a lot of the universities have come in to see how that's being achieved. Online learning, uh, which I'll talk a little bit more about uh, in a bit, but there's been some serious um, online courses being taken uh, by the contractors and the people coming through the academy. So what's happening today? Well, we're running onboarding sessions, um, which bring project per project in, the project manager, the CAD lead, the engineering manager, et cetera, et cetera, uh, come in with that, um, including their corporate BIM champions, very important, because a lot of the time that BIM champion is involved in the tender process, but he's not involved specifically in the project itself. He needs to understand what um, the pressures and the obligations are for his teams so he can help them out. And within that session, we deal with the Crossrail BIM vision, uh, document management, we look at CAD modeling management, we look at asset management and something called BIM in delivery, uh, which is an innovations working group. Also online learning. Now Crossrail have done something very clever here in that they supply to their tier ones um, 10 licenses of Bentley software and also uh, free access to the online learn server, which means that they can supply that down their supply chain. Uh, tier twos, tier threes, etc. So when it comes to delivering information in the same format, uh, with the same processes, there is no excuse for saying, well, I couldn't afford the software and I can't afford to train my team. So they're moving forward and making sure that that risk is fully mitigated. Coming after that, we have focus sessions, which are identified during those awareness briefings. 
Now, one of those uh, focus sessions is 4D, where you get the information for one, how you process that, how you split up your models and what your deliverables are to um, Crossrail in the end. Things like the asset process and painting. How do we um, deliver assets? What do we call these? How do we label them? How do we tag them? How do we paint them? And how do we link the asset information register to the 3D model? Rebar, uh, because of the uh, complex nature of the environment, a lot of contractors are having to model their rebar uh, to ensure that coordination and clash detection is complete with the other areas um, that are sharing their space. So taking people through that process, looking at the mobile sphere of the field engineering app, digital pen reviews with the as-built um, processes, and also the document control and the master delivery list. We have uh, coaching facilities because the academy itself is a replica of the Crossrail environment with the same processes, the same software, the same um, hardware, uh, the same networking inside, which allows us to replicate the Crossrail environment quite dramatically. Um, this allows the Crossrail team to coach contractors through processes rather than train them specifically on software. It's also because of that environment being able to use the laboratory because business is not always as usual. A lot of the contractors will have fantastic technologies that they've deployed on other projects that they want to be able to deploy on the Crossrail project. How can they do this easily? Well, they can bring it into the academy, trial it out, work out the process, work out if it's technically probable, and then deliver that to the Crossrail IT team. So things like the uh, drawing validation tool, um, RFIDs, tagging assets underground, augmented uh, reality, looking at how we can br better brief um, teams going down to the construction sites and also uh, optioneering. We're looking at how laser scanning can be incorporated, what's the process for gathering that information, storing it, processing it and also delivering it. Uh, noise and sound vibration, obviously very important with a project that's in the centre of uh, London and has so many tunnel boring machines etc uh, that need to um, be taken into account. Uh, we have something called the BIM Delivery Working Group which has three uh, areas work looks at modelling, mobility and as built and to do that we identify a need within uh, a project, we select a projects that we can run trials on, we understand the business value behind that, conduct proof of concepts, measure business value uh, and then try and drive adoption. There's plenty of contractors involved in this, plus the commit group and Bentley, to really try and drive innovation within the Crossrail program of works. We also look at industry compliance to see how um, standards and um, processes impact on the uh, Crossrail environment. So looking at how COBE for all will impact, things like Uniclass for infrastructure, the AD4 um, asset data definition dictionary documents, the PAS 1192 part two, and eventually when it comes out part three, and ISO 15926. We've got plenty of other proposed academies on the way, uh, Network Rail, High Speed 2, Highways Agency, the Reich Earth and Star, Environment Agency, Welsh Assembly Government, and potentially the Riyadh Metro. All have discovered this is the best way to help deliver their vision down to their supply chain and get everybody moving in the same direction. So why have your own academy? Well, it's all about education supply chain, briefing them on your, on your vision, explaining their contract obligations, helping them understand why you want them to do what you want them to do. To coach and train them, show them how to use your systems, take them through processes and workflows, Allow them to experiment and sandbox. Let's not stifle innovation here. We need to take advantage of new technologies and assess the impact of new standards. And in the end, it all down to mitigating risks. Finally, um, something we call the Big BIM World takes part in the Academy in London. This is all about bringing together the best of breed for other areas, not just the light rail and um, underground infrastructure. We understand that there's roads, um, dock facilities, airports, etc., etc., that need to be run on the same processes, and how do those integrate and interface around? So, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be bringing in construction engineering students who play games. 
specifically things like The Sims uh, and Minecraft, because these particular bits of uh, gaming software are the basis for BIM. You work in a 3D collaborative environment, you select assets and objects from libraries, you place them into your 3D environment, you manipulate them, you put information against them, you run them as an asset to win the game. And in the end, that's what we're trying to do. So combining students who play games with contractors who are willing to spend some time describing how to model uh, those specific areas and also the software experts who are going to kind of show them how to use the software. In the end, what we're looking to do is to develop and deploy that big BIM world. So that was a very quick 15 minutes on the uh, Crossrail Bentley Information Academy. If you've got any other questions, please get in contact. Thank you.